And now that we're starting to get some confidence here in working with calorimeters, now let's do another example here of what we call a constant volume calorimeter, calorimeter or a bomb calorimeter. And of course, again, a constant volume calorimeter is used when a reaction creates gas, which would otherwise expand. And when the gas expands, it takes away energy from the reaction. And we can't fully measure the energy release in the reaction to try to find the change in the enthalpy, the enthalpy of the reaction, which is what we're trying to do here. So here we have um, some uh, gasoline, well, a component of gasoline in a way. It's called naphthalene. It's C10H8 and it's probably a component of gasoline. I remember our gran my grandfather calling gasoline naphtha, and of course it comes from the chemical naphthalene, C10H8. Let's say we have 1.435 grams of that, and we burn it, which means we combust it in a calorimeter with 2,000 grams of water, and the specific heat, or I should say the heat capacity of the calorimeter is an additional 1,800 joules per centigrade degree. So, that means we're going to be heating up the calorimeter and we're going to be heating up the water in the calorimeter, so we have to account for both. The temperature of the calorimeter and the water rises from 23.55 degrees centigrade to 29.22 degrees centigrade. And so from that, we should be able to figure out what the delta H is. Now, of course, if you want to write down the equation, if we start with C8, uh, not, not C8, C10, the naphthalene is C10H8. And we're going to add to that, of course, some oxygen, otherwise we can't combust it. And of course, the byproduct of that will be carbon dioxide, and we're going to have some water. Since we create a lot of heat, this will probably be in a gaseous form. This is, of course, a gas. This is a gas, and this, of course, will be a liquid. Um, how much do we need in order to balance it? Well, we have 10 carbons here. We only have one carbon here. That means we need 10 of these. Uh, we have eight hydrogens here. We need eight of them there, so we need a four on there. And so now we have 20 oxygens and another four. That's 24 oxygens. That means we need a 12 over here. So now the equation is balanced. Okay, that's just for reference. We do realize that we only need one mole of this in order to sustain the reaction. Now the equation. So the heat gained by the water, which is the mc delta t for the water in the calorimeter, plus the mc delta t for the calorimeter itself. Now notice the mc of the mc delta t for the calorimeter is the specific heat, which, or I should say the heat capacity, I keep saying the wrong thing here, heat capacity, which is this number right there. So that is the heat capacity right there of the calorimeter. So heat is gained by the water in the calorimeter, heat is gained by the calorimeter itself, and those two combined should equal the heat given off by the reaction. And then the equation for the heat given off by the reaction is equal to the negative of the enthalpy change per the reaction. And then we need to have the number moles per reaction. So one reaction, we have one mole because the way the equation is written, that is, this is the molar quantity of the reaction. And then, we're going to multiply this times the mass divided by the mass per mole. All right, we're looking for the enthalpy change. We're looking for the delta H right there. So what we're going to do with this equation is move everything else on the right side over to the left side so we can isolate delta H. That means our equation now becomes mc delta T for the water plus the mc delta T for the calorimeter. So this is the heat gained by the water in the calorimeter. Now we multiply this times the reaction goes. Anything in the denominator goes to the numerator. So we have one reaction. We have the number of moles. I should really say number of moles because we know it's going to be one in this case, but just in general, number of moles. And the mass per mole. Divide all that by what now goes in the denominator. So one reaction comes over here. And the mass comes down here as well. We're going to take the negative over here and move it to the other side that comes over here, and all that then is equal to the delta H. Now we're ready to plug in some numbers and find out what that is equal to. So, mass of the water, 2,000 grams. The specific heat of the water, 4.186 joules per gram per centigrade degree. The change in the temperature, well, let's see here. We went from 23.55 to 29.22. So let's do a quick subtraction here, 
23.55. So 12 minus 5 is 7, 11 minus 5 is 6, 8 minus 3 is 5. So 5.6 centigrade degrees for the change. That goes in here, 5.67 centigrade degrees. So this is the heat absorbed by the water plus MC right here of the calorimeter, which was 1800 joules per centigrade degree, and then we multiply that times the change in the temperature, which is again 5.67 centigrade degrees. All right, so now we have, put that together like that, the heat absorbed by the water plus the heat absorbed by the calorimeter. Reaction, reaction cancels out. The number of moles, we know that is one mole, and the mass per mole. What is the mass per mole of naphthalene? Well, we have 10 carbons, and each carbon has a mass of 12 grams, so let's write that down here. So 10 carbons means 10 times 12 grams. We'll round out the nearest gram, which is 120 grams. And then we have uh, eight hydrogens. So eight hydrogens, we'll call that eight times one gram. So that's eight grams, so that's for a total of 128 grams. So we're rounding it off just a little bit. We know that the mass of hydrogen is slightly more than a gram, and then per mole and the mass of the carbon is slightly more than 12 grams per mole because of the isotopes in carbon, but close enough. So we'll call this 128 grams per mole. And now we divide that by the mass. How much do we have? Well, they tell us we have 1.435 grams, so 1.435 grams. Okay, now we're ready to calculate or delta H. So 2000 times 4.186 times 5.67 equals to that we're going to add that so plus 1800 times 5.67 equals so now we have all the heat gained by the water in the calorimeter times 128 grams per mole and then divide by the amount of the sample divide by 1.4 three, five equals. And so we have, wow, that's a, an awful lot. Five point, so that's 5,144 kilojoules. The moles cancels out, so that would be the reaction. Now, don't forget, we have a minus in front of here. So this minus goes here, which means we have a minus there, which means that the delta H of this reaction is equal to minus 5,144 kilojoules. And that's a lot of energy. Wow, that's quite a number. So we get a lot of energy when we combust naphthalene, which is a good thing because when we put gasoline in the car, we want to have all that power, all that energy from that chemical reaction. And that's how you do that problem.